thank you at the outset i'd like to thank dr rajesh yeah. for having me here no, no. so i'll be covering two topics in succession first one contact lenses fitting in corneal scars and the second one would be care and maintenance so if you have any questions at the end of the two sessions you can have the questions for that so the first topic is i call them broken corneas the one with corneal scars i have no financial interest to declare but the normal cornea as you know is an aspheric regular cornea and i have used a bonsai to demonstrate to you what the normal cornea looks like However, once the cornea is broken, the topography is altered. In that case, to fit a lens on this broken topography is difficult because the lens, by fabrication, by design, is meant to be fitted on a aspheric cornea. So, these are the type of corneas which we deal with in our clinic. Now, my session, my talk will be based on three types of fitting which we've done over the last ten, fifteen years. we had a series of patient with corneal scars and opacities almost 112 patients trauma comprised 71% post inflammatory ectasias and scars 23% and post surgery 5% these were the some of the bad cases with such scars and they were very often unfortunately children whose whole life depended on their reading abilities and for that no spectacles were possible so contact lens fitting was our wish and mandate to do these scars were not so bad what does the contact lens essentially do it converts the irregular astigmatism which is seen in the pre fit topography and this is a topography taken with the contact lens on so it converts the pre fit irregular astigmatism into a regular surface in our series we could have success in almost 71% mean improvement was more than 3 lines median was 4 lines however it took us a long time average trials were at least 3 with a range from 1 to 7 now the patients who improved were 21% percent aphakic, 9% percent pseudophakic, rest were phakic. Which patients did not improve? We should know so that we don't attempt too much in those patients and straight away refer for a keratoplasty. But those with a very dense corneal scar, and five cases had amblyopia. Now, in these children, if you leave these scars untreated for a long time, you don't rehabilitate them. By the time you end up rehabilitating them, they have dense amblyopia, so it doesn't work out. so these are the type of patients we had seen these are the patients with the corneal scar with the nebular macular opacity and they did pretty well the other ones were the dense scars this is the bisecting scar and this also is a vertically bisecting scar with an rgp lens on and this is the one with an rgp lens on and this lens as you can see cannot be centered eucomatous opacities you try to fit them but in this patient what we ultimately did was we did a photomidrasis for this patient so we dilated the pupil and this patient could ultimately see and he he was waiting for keratoplasty in which he went for ultimately the other series with so the first series was the post traumatic scars second was the post traumatic monocular aphakic eyes now for these aphakic patients for the previous series we could sketch we could put the rgp lens or the soft lens but for these monocular aphakic ch people especially children 70% were children as i said you have to ensure binocularity with the normal eye so spectacles cannot ever be an option it has to be a contact lens and these patients we fitted both soft lenses and rgp lenses you would say in fake children's rgp lenses are difficult yes they are difficult but they are absolutely not infeasible it is a possibility we should just be patient and keep trying to do it so these are some children in which we fitted contact lenses instead of this heavy cumbersome spectacles but please remember that in children some anatomical and physiological variations from adults which we need to remember while fitting contact lenses that in children the normal diameter of the cornea is 10 mm now the standard soft contact lens parameters diameter would be 13.5 so you have to make it get it custom made it they only reach a diameter of 11.7 at one year so if you put an put an adult contact lens for a child 
you're going to have problems. So you have to have a designed lens for a child which is geared up for this diameter. Radius of a child is 7.1 mm and for an adult it's 7.8. So thus these children need steeper lenses. Exit length of a child is smaller, so smaller, steeper and stronger lenses are required for children vis-a-vis -vis adults. However, the corneal endothelium is very healthy, it's dense and it withstands hypoxia better. However, tears have less mucus, more water. Blink rate in a child is very less, children sleep very much, they ch sleep for long times and child's world primarily is near. So you have to focus for near and dear and you have to plan for blinking. You can't ask the child to blink. So you have to put frequent lubricant drops and arrange for a lens which is hydrophilic. That is why a silicon lens is although were very good in oxygen permeability, but not very successful because they were hydrophobic. Now how do you assess the fit? In children, again, they will not say ki aap blink karo and the child will blink. It will not happen. So you have to assess by dynamic fit. You ask the patient. We have toys in our clinic. We ask the patient, children to move. Look at the toys. The parent, the mother sits with them. And you ask the, patient, uh, the children to look at the toys and then assess the movement of the lens. And then you can't really do the fluorescing fitting for an RGP lens in a child very well. It has to be a dynamic uh, fitting pattern which we see. So by... I don't know if it's visible there. Now in this child, on looking up, the lens is lagging behind. So this is a, this is a flat lens. Good. And in this child, on lateral movements, as Rajesh was telling you, this is up movement and lateral movements. This seems to be almost okay, but this is a little larger lens. So again, you have to redesign this lens with a smaller overall diameter. This is an RGP lens. It's a very, very flat. It is, it is an okay fitting lens, but it has an axial edge lift. So you have to redesign the edge lift for this patient. This is an extended wear lens. It is sagging down. Okay, so this is a very, very flat lens. And this lens is designed for adult wear. So if you reduce the diameter and reduce the, do, do the base curve correction, this lens will fit. This lens is an RGP lens and the patient is looking up, it's moving well. So this picture, slide I showed you just to get rid of that fear or the phobia that we cannot fit RGP lenses in children. Yes, you can. All of us can fit, we just require the patients to keep doing it. The parameters we used were extended wear hydrogels, which were used at a daily wear basis. Please don't prescribe the extended wear to a child and tell the mother to remove after one week. Do not ever do it. Use an EW lens, but use it on a daily wear basis because risk of infection is very high. As I said, blinking is poor. Hygiene necessarily of children is very poor. And, uh, and the second thing is the tears are more viscous. So the infection rate can be very high. RGP can be used in little older children. The lens profile was uh, uh, you power you calculate by over refraction. And please remember, a young child, there will be a very rapid my myopic shift. So you tell the parents that every three months, the child's lens has to be changed. So if you tell them three months, you do it six months, they won't tell you that Dr. we never told us before that you'll require a three lenses in one year's time. Follow up initially weekly for a month, then fortnightly, then three monthly. So it requires a very meticulous and a very stringent follow up. Refractions have to be repeated three monthly in the first year and then later six monthly and then maybe you can switch to a yearly refraction. Lens loss, please anticipate that there will be three to five in the initial year, backup pair of spectacles if it's a bilateral effect. If it's a uniocular case, then you can't have a backup pair of spectacles. You have to have a backup pair of lenses. In children, it's a double whammy. You have a problem of amblyopia, so you need to do the patching. The patching can be by different ways, either by opticlude patching, which comes in different colors and prints, or you can have a do-on as a cluder. But patching has to be part and parcel of your contact lens fitting. Otherwise, what are we aiming for is vision in a child. And despite our best contact lens fitting, we won't be able to give vision unless we do the amblyopia treatment. Another thing which I ask my patients to do is I give the children these type of colored puzzle books. They're all very expensive. It just costs around 80 to 100 rupees. And the mother 
colors them with felt pens and things and the child just keeps fitting the puzzles in so that gives them a exercise to do with the contact lens on do i have time rajesh do i have okay so you monitor also for another thing which i have seen in the ambla in the uh, fake corneal scar patients is the fake glaucoma how do you assess that now what will happen is it the pressures may be difficult to assess in a small child when you do the refractions when you do it 6 month you will find a more rapid myopic shift because the axial lens is enlarging so if you see a myopic shift more than required please go ahead and go go and check for pressures with perkins or whatever technique you have and check for the for the disc damage disc damage may not occur in the early stages so pressures have to be checked but keep this warning in your mind that glaucoma is a big possibility in these children and you have to uh, check that keep checking it out by the rapid myopic shift then these children often land up with squinting and nystagmus that means you have inadequate correction of the lens and the in inadequate centering of the lens or inadequate compliance the mother comes to you yes doctor i have been putting the patient the ch- child with the contact lens for 6 hours a day and you find that the child is squinting that means that the mother actually is not putting the lens or when you put the lens on and you find the lens is decentered it is not actually in the position because the lens has overgrown the child so next thing you remember is for a fake corneal scars that you must have bifocals for the school going children you would need that bifocals which are executive type for the school going children for them to have adequate binocular binocularity otherwise you land up with these squinting type of kids complications you can have infective keratitis as for any contact lens hypoxia with a red itchy eye tearing giant pa- papillary conjunctivitis less blinking so drying and stuck on lens is very common so then you tell the mother that if the child's lens is un- you are unable to remove it then put the lubricating drops wait and then try to remove or if still not possible come back to the clinic and get it done deposit some more prone and new vascularizations so salient points in corneal scar fitting especially for children are fit steeper smaller assessed by movement centration thicker lenses because they are fake so need freer movements astigmatism somebody had asked us about astigmatism in children you can ignore it now now these corneal scars may have a cylinder of 3 to 4 but if you start correcting by toric lenses is not possible rgp sometimes may not be possible then in the, those cases you ignore the astigmatism just aim for a spherical correction something is better than nothing then the third group which we fitted was the post keratoplasty which had infections and these scars were there in the post pk patients these were 25 eyes range of cylinder was up till 19 cylinder mean was of 9 to 10 of a cylinder now for the keratoplasty patient with corneal scars you need the lenses to of a larger diameter only rgp lens fitting is possible in this so lenses of a larger diameter always more than 9.4 If you have poor centration, give go for even larger and steeper contact lens. Over refraction has to be verified at two separate occasions on two separate days. Why am I stressing that? Is if you are in a rap, in, if you are in a very busy practice, you do the contact lens fitting and do the refraction on a keratoplasty plastic patient. because the movement of the lens with time will change in 2 3 days the watering will change so it is preferable before finalizing the lens that you call the patient again best better after 2 3 days and then verify the over refraction and then prescribe the lens centration is poor in eccentric graft and excessive asymmetry in pki you prefer a flatter fit with a higher decay to lesser compromise the corneal endothelium so these were some of our patients with eccentric grafts Okay, so this is the topography free of those patients. This was a patient which we really couldn't fit very well. It was a 25 cylinder. So this graft is so eccentric that no contact lens can fit. So only a resurgery is the option. And in PK with time, you normally fit the lens after six months or one year, or preferably after suture removal. But sometimes that is not an option. So. as suture removal is done or as healing happens the axis changes so your lens fitting perforce also will change so keep that in mind when fitting these patients now we uh, so this was the study which we had published 
Conclusions: Contact lens corrects irregular astigmatism caused by corneal scars by creating a new corneal surface. Associated unocular aphakia, pseudophakia, which is a very common scenario in these trauma patients, enables binocularity with the normal eye, and it's extremely useful option in traumatic corneal scars with aphakia. It reduces the load of patients on penetrating keratoplasty and the long interminable waiting period for PK in our country. Not to mention the risk of graft infection, rejection, use of steroids makes. contact lens fitting a very very viable option so please when you remember these broken corneas no try to think out of the box dare to innovate fit contact lenses it is absolutely possible my next uh, topic it would be care and maintenance i'll be taking it i want to highlight one is the contact lens care for that please keep one trick of uh, one tip in mind is always check on the contact lens case when the patient comes to you ask them to bring their case with them why i'll tell you i'll tell you the top this thing i have no financial interest to declare now i'll be covering the care of contact lens and maintenance in four aspects because these are the four aspects which will cause complications so basically your all the care and maintenance is to prevent complications and to give visual gain care maintenance is so that the lens longevity is there and there are no complications the complications can be physiological pathological problematic and visual phenomenon and last would be wear and tear which nobody can stop and solution related so the ultimate aim of care is to prevent and reduce these ocular infection to prevent and reduce inflammation to provide comfort and clear vision at all costs and to maintain hydration vetability of lenses to prevent and minimize deposits which is part and parcel of the last one so keeping these aims in mind your care and maintenance should be there so first one is physiology related now please remember that any contact lens no matter how well fitted soft or rgb will compromise both the epithelium the stroma and the endothelium keep that in mind nothing is safe as no contact lens so it will compromise the epithelial barrier function therefore the risk of infection it will inhibit the cleaning action which is worsened by poor blinking if you know this then you'll ask the patient to do the blinking and this will cause more of hypoxia and allergy so incomplete or reduced blinking will cause drying of contact lens and this is exacerbated by computer use dry and air, dry air or air condition environments and causes poor lens fit and 3 and 9 o'clock staining so knowing this aspect of problems you are going to give the respective care instructions targeted to reducing this problem would be tell the patient to a think blink jab aapko yaad aaye please remember aankh band kar lijiye blink and blinking also has to be complete blink now this is a picture of a patient blinking it's an incomplete blink and if you can see the soft lens is there it will get dried out so you should have a complete blink so what i tell my patients is practice your blinking in front of the mirror with the contact lens on with one eye so that you can assess with the other eye how you're blinking so when you're blinking completely then your lens doesn't desiccate out and if the patient is on computers for a long time or doing excessive near work or in an environment which is conducive to dryness then you ask them to use lubricants and prevent overwear which means don't use the lens for more than 10 to 8 hours per day still despite that the major problem i see in my contact lens wearer soft lens at my project sees the same thing is dry eyes they have problems of dry eyes and that's related to inadequate blinking computer computer work we call it the sick building sinus syndrome i think if you've ever read this word before it's called a sick building syndrome it causes uneven tear distribution and 3 and 9 o'clock staining i'll come to this in the next slide in addition you can have trauma from a poorly fitted contact lens and cause erosions and neovascularizations now treatment for preventing this complication of dry eyes is as i said think blinking lubricants reduce overwear and modify the cl fit so if you find that despite your blinking and lubricants patient still has dry eyes please remove ask the patient to remove the lens check it and we we'll, what i do is i check it on the back of my hand the rgb lens and if there is an edging defect you feel the roughness you go for an edging and polishing 
and if it's soft lens if it is chipped or has deposits then you do a replacement lens okay so this is what you do for you can have tendon formation you can have tight lens and drying of lenses if you haven't taken care of these blinking problem during care of the lenses this something which i'm which is coming up in a big way cvs syndrome or a sick building syndrome lot of computer work remember look at this call center person so these people are using the computers for hours in a non very poorly ventilated room that may be ac with recirculating air in addition some of the colleagues are smoking so tobacco is also circulating in this air so then this causes a lot of dryness and due to the computer usage decreased computation amplitude ocular surface is more exposed the reduced blinking is there so crowded cramped postures recirculation recirculating air conditioned air with low humidity and cigarette smoking it's a retrograde devolution back to the chimpanzees and i had taken this picture in a in fact in a place in maharashtra where they had these small tailors and they said ki hamare paas bahut kam jagah hai we don't have any place but this is still better ventilation than this place which is has lot of ac in delhi so ventilation for people on computers is very important both ocular ventilation and minimal computer usage and if they are going to use a computer a lot then ask them to do lubricants then second aspect is hypoxia induced by the contact lens causing clear or the contact lens induced dry eye or uh, red eye for that the instructions given are that you reduce the amount of wear per day depending on how much your eye tolerates if you are having clear after the end of 9 to 10 hours then reduce it to 6 to 7 hours or you change from a daily wear lens to an extended wear lens with a better decay value and ask the child ask the patient to do a weekly off like we day sabbath day god rested so does let the lens rest so a one day a week take it off and so you can avoid these problems of clear these are all patients with clear who came to us with overwear syndrome of the lens then chronic hypoxia can also cause neovascularization this is a very small point i want to highlight that patients with soft lens who have it on a pingy killer this is a very common phenomenon you can't avoid that so with these patients the fitting may be act, will be normal on your clinic but after 3 4 days you'll find that the lens edging is a problematic so again the solution only is lubricants or you free fit with a higher dk lens and that is why the importance of a supervised lens fit or a 6 monthly to an annual visit care so you have to tell the patient that every 6 months even if you have no problems you must come and show me because you know that these problems can come up and the patient will not know this second issue is pathological or patient related now deposits like rust kajal mascara perfume nicotine i have seen them all over the couple of years this is or uh, this is a patient who had used henna that you know dying for the hair and this green staining had come up these are deposits because of poor blinking and this is a patient with with a cosmetic contact lens who did not take care of that lens and this is a heavily deposited lens now deposits are more common in extended wear lenses and in fake lenses in high water content lenses and in patients with poor hygiene dry eyes and improper blinking so the special targeted care for this instructions are that frequent lens replacements as and when advised a lens life of a soft lens in delhi metropolitan polis with pollution is not more than 9 to 10 months it may be a cleaner environment maybe one year but definitely not more than one year rgp lens can survive for two years but requires frequent edging and polishing then adequate cleaning the rub and rinse the cradle sequence will be covering regular cleaning with alcohol based surfactant cleaners and enzymatic cleaners for patients who have lot of deposits frequent replacement schedules or disposables if the patient still has deposits so then these deposit prone patients require these type of instructions overwear in a child is very frequent as i said in my previous talk that a child sleeps uh, for a long time so a child may be napping for 1 hour or 2 hours and the mother forgets to remove the lens before she, before he is sleeping in that case the lens can tighten on the cornea and this is a displaced lens on the cornea and causes the lens imprint because a nifakic lens is a very 
thick lens. So th this lens over where you have to avoid. So tell the child, mother to remove the lens if the child is sleeping for longer and she will not know how long he is sleeping. So if he slept for more than half an hour, she has to open the eye and remove the lens. Third complication is the inflammation and immune related. The specific care for this is that ensure no deposits or the, the cradle sequence, do lubricants, prevent overwear or go for disposable lenses. And this is more common in soft lenses. So if this recurrent GPC with a soft lens or a disposable lens, then the only option left would be a RGP lens or ask the patient to get elastic surgery done. So this is a patient who was prone for GPC it's a very strong G stained GPC and this used to, he used to keep having deposits. So deposit cleaning was a solution for this patient. Then the last one which you want to all avoid, that is why we have this meticulous care and all these solutions geared up for the antimicrobials because you want to prevent infection. Acanthamoeba is also a problem especially if you use unpreserved homemade saline or tap water and poor hygiene. And here is this, what I, in the first slide I'd shown was the lens case. To prevent this complication in the lens care, you always evaluate the lens case. Because I will tell you how much care the patient is taking of the contact lens by seeing the contact lens case. Checklist to the patient given is for reporting back, you give the patient symptom list that if you have redness, if you have irritation, if you have blurring of vision, if you can't tolerate the lens for more than one hour, foreign body sensation, then you come back to us and show us. So give this checklist to the patient and so that you can prevent the patients of progressing into these infective keratitis. A very strangely frequent complication I've seen, which should not be there, is this type. Anybody wants to tell me what this is? Yes? Yes, excellent. It's an inside out list. Okay? So sometimes when the soft lens is not placed properly, just take it, it's an inside out lens. Just do the taco test and tell the you have to teach the patient this actually, that I can't see anymore, I can't, the lens doesn't get fitted because they've placed it reversely. Okay? And the uh, instruction I give is that take the right lens out first, put it in the case, take the left lens out next and then put it in the case. Go in that sequence so that they don't make a mistake, you still can make mistakes. Then the last one is lens aging, you can't stop that, everybody ages, so does the lens, lens does get spoiled, so don't keep lingering on to the same lens, ki yehi saaf kar do, isi ko laga do, change the lens. And uh, if you can do mid-meriotic ultrasonic cleaning of the soft contact lens, if the discoloration of the lens with pigment, with scratching, with chipping, then you must remove the lens and get go for a fresh lens. And if a patient is on eye drops for any reason, for glaucoma or for a, for a child with a fakia or cataract, then try to use always unpreserved solution drops. We avoid the use of preservative drops because that will cause a permanent straining with thiamersal and benzene and collium will cause a staining of the contact lens. Visual phenomena is usually fitting related that you haven't fitted the lens properly. There's flare and glare. The care is in the aftercare and corneal checkup because as I said in children, in keratoplasty and otherwise, the lens parameters may change with time and the corneal parameters may change. So you need to reassess the fit after a year at least to ensure that the visual phenomena of care and flare, uh, of uh, flare and halos don't happen. And cleaning of lenses has to be meticulous. If again there's a deposits in the lens, then despite well fitting, there'll be flare phenomena. One small this thing on solutions, that's a big topic, I can't cover it in this, but solutions can be cleaning solutions, disinfecting, soaking and wetting solutions, and lubricants. And now mix and, uh, mixing of them is in multipurpose solutions which have surfactant and antimicrobial agents added. Please remember that lenses which are stored at different pH than normal pH would alter the parameters, so they have to be pH balanced. Don't top up the solution with normal saline or water because very often patients say hum bahar gaye the hamare paas tha nahi humne inko top up kar diya that will alter the ph of the solution and the lens param soft lens pattern will change and never 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 use tap water please for soaking the lenses or for washing the lenses you have to instruct the patient in that 
landscape protocol is that hand washing has to be done. This is a checklist given to the patient, instructions given to the patient which they carry back with them. Hand washing with a non-fragrant free soap. Uh, with a fragrant free soap, place the lens in the palm of the hand, rub with the four fingers, never rub like this because it drops the lenses. The lens has to be rubbed like this as I have shown in that picture. Okay, this to and fro and lateral loop, uh, rolling movement with two to three drops of solution, mechanical rubbing, rinsing reduces rebris and microbes and enhances efficacy of the cleaning solution. Then you do, uh, remove the loosely bound cell debris, mucus, lipid, protein, deposit, whatever. After rubbing, rinse thoroughly in normal saline. Homemade saline is not an option. Disinfect in fresh solution and clean in the storage cases. Do not mix solution types and brands because the pH is different. Handling lenses have to be done not in the bathroom but preferably at a dressing table. So ask them not to use over the sink in the bathroom because lenses get lost that way. So you can just wash in there but not keep not keep it there. So wash your hands and then bring the lens case to the your dressing table and then do it there. Lens storage. Clean case using fresh disinfecting solution each time. Each morning once the lens is inserted, you just clean the case and put it upside down. Why I'm saying on the tissue? Because that will dry out the lens totally. <coughs> In the evening, revert it, clean it with the, with, the, with the tissue, dry it out and then refill it and then put the lens in that. Soil lens cases are a source of microbial contamination. Keep a special toothbrush for the contact lens case which you can scrub regularly and rinse with hot water. Rubbing disrupts the biofilm on the lens and hot water would kill it. Replace the lens case also frequently. lens replace the lens case so that's not a point. You have to do it with every lens, new lens and new case comes. <coughs> but preferably three monthly the case should be changed. Vented cases are not an option. Using solutions after expiry are not an option. So now we prefer to give small bottles with 300 ml solution and not 500 because then they remain for longer time open and cause contamination. So for children, these cases which are attractive are a good option. Cleaning regimens, Dr. Rajesh has already covered. Daily disposable frequent replacement lenses don't need cleaning. Protein cleaning is required only for daily wear lenses and for people who have a lot of deposits. Otherwise, this cradle sequence I have told you, that I'll just be coming to that, is that rinse, applic rinse, rub, rinse and cradle is done. Cosmetics. Now, very often we ladies use a lot of cosmetics and we use the contact lenses so this instructions to the to the girls is important that i for application of eye makeup the lens has to be in before applying your mascara or eyeliner and the lens has to be out before removing the mascara or the eyeliner Kajal application cannot be done cannot be done with the contact lens in because it will Dirty the contact lens plus cause foreign body sensation. And very often when you have these long nails, these are absolutely no-no with the lens. Which activities not to do? You have to instruct the patient, don't swim with the contact lenses. If you do, use your swimming goggles which are totally water sealed. Don't shower the contact lens. If you're using topical eye drops in C2, please consult your doctor. Never use homemade saline and have preferably small packs of 120 or 150 ml and large packs. Don't sleep with the contact lenses on because if you sleep with the contact lenses for a longer time, it can cause overwear. When to seek treatment, this checklist is given. Red, irritated eye, irritation, stinging, decreased comfort, poor vision, foreign body sensation, injury to the eye. Immediately stop contact lens wear and seek care. And last but not the least, please remember to which type of patient you have to strike the contact lens. You know what your patient is, you can give it instructions, but the patient may not follow it. So please know that what type of patient you are giving the lens, especially for a child, if it's a child of a celebrity or an educated person, or if it's a child of a person who is not so educated. So depending, for this patient, I would never give a soft lens, I've given RGP lens or spectacles, I would not give a soft lens because it will cause infection. So cradle sequence is clean, rinse and disinfect lens every time. 
otherwise you may land up and this is a case which i saw with a patient of fungus grown into it obviously this patient is not a fit patient for a contact lens so choose your patient with care that is your main instruction for your instruct care of lens contact lenses thank you